there are three major scriptures that theologians have used in an attempt to x-ray the origin of satan very strangely the book of the beginnings genesis is largely silent about the beginning of satan which has confused theologians for a long time because you would expect that the book of the beginnings should capture everything to put context to our work but the book of the beginnings does not seem to state so much about satan's origin it just started straight with his character and his operation and so we need to explore a few other scriptures to find reference are we together but the bible very clearly at least let's use jesus because one of the ways that we learn the ways of god is jesus jesus himself called satan a thief in john chapter 10 and verse 10 there are many names that satan is called in scripture i will list a few of them then we'll go to his original name and begin from there praise the name of the lord in john chapter 10 and verse 10 jesus himself calls satan the thief very definite article the thief that he cometh not but for to steal to kill and to destroy and jesus says i am come that they may have life and that they may have it more abundantly so satan is called devil we see one of his names devil and i told you that devil is yes is used to identify that singular individual who heads the demonic kingdom but more than that the word devil is a generic description it comes from the greek word diabolos diabolos where you get the word diabolism the greek word diabolos and it means the accuser or the slanderer so the devil is from the word diabolos from the greek the accuser or the slanderer and then we have satan or satan now right it means to oppose one who opposes or one who acts as an adversary we have satan being called the thief we have satan being called the enemy in the parable of the wheat and the tears the bible says when jesus saw it he said the enemy had done this we see satan called the evil one we see satan called in ephesians chapter 2 and verse 2 for instance the prince of the power of the air the prince of the power of the air he is also called the spirit that walks in the children of disobedience these are several names satan himself is called the adversary the adversary but the original name of satan as revealed in scripture is lucifer the word lucifer from the hebrew tongue when it is translated it means the shining one or the light bearer now i want to tell you a little story and i pray that you will understand and be blessed by it in the name of jesus there are three scriptures classically that we use in scripture in discussing the origin of satan um, the first of them as we see is revelations chapter 12 from verse 7 where we read the bible lets us know that there was war in heaven and michael and his angels fought against the dragon another name satan is called and that the dragon fought and his angels so we see that satan at that time already had an organized system of angels too hallelujah praise the lord right so verse 8 and prevailed not neither was there a place found for them anymore that means before that time where were they living they had access to heaven together with the angels are we together now anymore means they once had that access right so let's go to isaiah 14 isaiah 14 now to understand we're going to isaiah 14 and then ezekiel 28 you will have to understand something in theology called prophetic parallels please look up prophetic parallels means that you can use a story to adumbrate you can use a prophetic description to adumbrate something that has happened in time past or something that will happen in the future for instance if i look at you and i say let's say you have a son and his father used to steal and i say young man 
keep behaving foolishly that is how that man stole and he was thrown away you understand what i'm saying now i'm using the story connected to this man but the warning is to the young man but that there is a story that i'm drawing from are you getting the point now you i need to give you this background so that you will understand what we're about to read because the story we're about to read was written to real kings but based on the law of prophetic parallels it was also um the prophet was using an ancient story to relate and bring a warning to the then kings are you clear on that now so let's go to isaiah chapter 14 from verse 12. isaiah 14 from verse 12. this was a description of the fall of lucifer are you ready please look up how art thou fallen from heaven O lucifer son of the morning that's the meaning of his name the light bearer son of the morning how art thou cut down to the ground which did weaken the nations we are reading to verse 17 very quickly verse 2 or next verse for thou hast said in your heart i will ascend into heaven i will exalt my throne above the stars of god i will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north 14 i will ascend above the heights of the clouds i will be like the most high take note i will be like the most high 15 yet thou shalt be brought down to hell and to the sides of the pit two more verses 16 now they that see thee shall narrowly look upon thee and consider thee saying is this the man that made the earth to tremble that did shake kingdoms 17 that made the world as a wilderness and destroyed the cities thereof that openeth not the house of his prisoners take note of this because i will be showing you a name and a story that jesus gave about satan that we do not find in scripture the name is a murderer he says you are of the your father the devil for from the beginning he was a murderer we never see him killing adam at least the first contact that means there was an old story that even predates adam because jesus called satan he said among the many accusations against satan is that he was a murderer Ezekiel 28, verse 11, second scripture. This is another prophetic parallel. It was to the king of Tyre, but then there is a parallel. You will see some things there that could not have happened to an earthly king. Moreover, the word of the Lord came unto me saying, verse 12, Son of man, take up a lamentation upon the king of Tyros. So the lamentation was a warning to the king, but he's about to draw a prophetic reference to warn the king, saying, Thus saith the Lord God, thou sealest up the sum, full of wisdom. This was the description of Lucifer before the fall. You are full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Verse 13. Thou hast been in Eden. Are you seeing that earth was created already before the fall of lucifer you have to understand this very very strange <laughs> when lucifer was casted down the bible says he was casted down to earth is that true scientists carbon date rocks and they tell us that the earth is millions and millions of years old they are not lying the oldest man on earth from Adam, as we know, is barely a little above 6,000 years. Is that true? But archaeologists and historians have discovered castles. They have discovered um, um, semblances of civilizations that are more than 6,000 years ago. That means that there is an old story. An old story that predates Adam. Let's finish up. It says every precious stone was the covering. Please just, just be graphic about this. Use your mind and look at how Satan was. That precious stones were his covering. The sardius, topaz, the diamond, the beryl, the onyx, the jasper, sapphire, emerald, and carbuncle, 
and gold the workmanship of thy timbrets and of thy pipes were prepared in the day that thou was created that means satan was created hello satan was you will be learning from this that the arch enemy of satan is not god the arch enemy of satan is man are we together satan is a created being let me quickly give you two scriptures to support that so that there's no confusion satan is a created being in fact three scriptures one is john 1 verse 3 the bible says and for without him all things were made by him how many things that if you ever see anything that appeared it was made by him and without him was not anything made that was made scripture number two colossians chapter one and verse 16 colossians 1 and 16 it says for by him were all things created that are in heaven was satan once in heaven and that are in the earth visible and invisible whether they be thrones dominions principalities or powers all things were created by him and for him are we together and then of course the last scripture is ezekiel 28 and verse 15. let's continue our reading now i just needed to put that in perspective thou was perfect in thy ways in the day that thou was created until iniquity was found in thee we are reading to 19 by the multitudes of thy merchandise they have filled the midst of thee with violence and thou hast sinned therefore i will cast thee as profane out of the mountain of the lord remember psalm 24 who shall ascend to the hill of the lord and i will destroy thee O covering cherub so we now see that satan was a cherub that covered in the midst of the stones of fire there's no mention of the king of tyre being in the midst of the stones of fire he would not even survive it 17. okay he said thy heart was lifted up because of your beauty aha uh -huh. the bible is now put in perspective we need to examine why satan would rebel from a place like heaven thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty thou has corrupted and then he said thou has corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness take note of the things that can corrupt people beauty wisdom he said i will cast thee to the ground i will lay thee before kings that they may behold thee 18. thou has defiled the sanctuaries by the multitude of thy iniquities by the iniquity of thy traffic therefore i will bring forth a fire from the midst of thee it shall devour thee i will bring thee to ashes upon the earth in the sight of all them that behold thee last verse all they that know thee among the people shall be astonished at thee thou shalt be a terror and never shall thou be any more prophetic parallels are you seeing now because the king that this judgment was upon later died but satan is still existing so that's why i told you you see prophetic parallels there are things that could not have been the king and there are things that could not have been satan are you learning so we know that satan was a created being according to scripture that he was lucifer one of the cherubs in heaven that was made according to colossians chapter 1 and verse 16 by god and for his glory but then the bible tells us that something happened revelations 12 tells us there was war in heaven please look up what did satan really want that is really what i want to help us and then we'll pray at least it is enough for us to know that he was created by god no matter what he is and no matter how long he existed we know that he is god's creation but what made satan listen carefully what made satan to rebel against god and what makes satan to still hate men today we need to examine this what is he looking for 
to answer this question in truth if i'm to do justice to this question there are two schools of thought and all of them are worth considering i will give it to you and then we'll discuss number one the first school of thought is believed that satan from ezekiel 28 that satan wanted to run a parallel government he said i will exalt myself above the stars of god i will be like the most high there was an obsession by reason of his beauty the bible says his beauty and his excellence and his wisdom flattered him that is also proven through his manipulation over earthly kings we see nebuchadnezzar also that these kings can be carried away by their beauty and their splendor and they will want to be god and we see that the same kind of judgment that was meted on satan was meted on nebuchadnezzar from a cherub he was thrown down to become nothing nebuchadnezzar from a, an exalted king he was thrown down to become an animal are we together now you can see those parallels so the first school of thought agrees that satan fell because of that desire i don't believe satan wanted to overthrow god he is it's clear that he can't do that but i i know that satan wanted to run a parallel government so that you can choose the option of god or him it is still the character of satan till today every time satan studies what god is doing he tries to create an alternative system to it are we together now now the second school of thought which is equally worth considering is the timing of revelation chapter 12 and verse 7 gives us a very serious picture it says that satan was cast to the earth and that means that means that the earth was already there and if the earth is already there then it also goes to tell us um now look up please <laughs> where do you think satan got the idea that he can be like god because that idea must have come from somewhere all things consist in god that means you don't have any wisdom outsourced from outside of God. So where would it, where, where do you think Satan would have gotten the idea that it is possible for man to be like God? Now, the second school of thought argue that Satan fell after man was created. Personally, I don't agree with that, but I'm going to teach you what I believe. Are we together? Just to honor those schools of thought. It is believed that when God made man and Satan saw the potential that man had now become in the image of God no creature was ever made in the image of God they were made in the likeness of God that jealousy are you seeing that that desire to be jealous and you see you can see that character consistent with the operation of satan too that every time something new comes that surpasses the old the old fights it you see jacob and esau you see ishmael you see abraham is that true you see all of these parallels that satan saw that man was created now in the image and the likeness of god now i do not believe that for many reasons um number one because according to Genesis chapter 1 and verse 31, that is the scripture that I use for my basis to argue away that. The Bible says, and God saw that everything that he had made was good. So it would not be possible for God to call everything good when Satan... Are, are you getting the idea now? Yes. Everything he had made was good and the evening and the morning came look up please i hope you realize that in the making of man genesis chapter one and genesis chapter two oh dear i wish we we'll have the time they are there are two different contexts of discussions apart now i don't want to confuse you because many people just read their bible from one and two you will see that in the making of man it was creation in genesis chapter 2 it is the formation of man when god blessed man in genesis chapter 2 it was adam man like the spirit of man the woman was in the man when he gave the dominion mandate 
That is why today in manifesting dominion, there is no gender. The moment you are in Christ, you can manifest that dominion. Because the woman came out of man in chapter 2, when that formation happened. It was simply based on the structure of family and God's organogram that the woman comes under the man. But as far as dominion over systems from a spiritual angle, the woman has the same ranking. There is neither male nor female. There is neither Jew nor Greek. There is one new man in Christ. Jesus came to restore that. Are we together? So, the school of thought that says that um, Satan satan did not fall um, he fell after man if you believe that that satan fell after man simply because he peeped into the making of man in the image of god and then jealousy came there are many other scriptures that don't agree with that are we together number one genesis 1 verse 1 and genesis 1 verse 2 theologically speaking we call it the gap theory and we know that the judgment in Genesis 1 verse 2 came as a result of the judgment of Lucifer. No other being was judged to have produced that kind of chaos. Every judgment that is recorded in scripture as we see had Lucifer behind it. From Genesis 1 verse 1, then Noah, to every other judgment that has happened to the final judgment that will condemn all men who have refused Jesus Christ. Satan has always been behind it. But this is what I believe based on scripture. Listen very carefully. Let me establish my thought on this now. <clears throat> Romans chapter 8 from verse 29. What does Satan really want? For whom he did foreknow, he, did, he also did predestinate to be conformed to the image of his son that he might be the firstborn among many brethren verse 30 moreover whom he did predestinate them he also called and whom he called he also justified and whom he justified them he also glorified please look up i believe and this is based on this scripture the Bible tells us the entire agenda of man was not one that was being executed real time. It was predestined. There was a foreknowledge. And do not forget the office of Satan. Satan was the light bearer, the custodian of the wisdom and the mysteries of God. To be predestined and foreordained means there was a time that God designed that, that he was going to create a being in his image and in his likeness and satan must have had access to that information based on his office this is what gave him an idea that so god can actually create another species in his image and his likeness and so that began to challenge him to want to work with that reason i will be like the most high if that is the case are we together now yes based on scripture if it is true that man was predestined the whole agenda it was never something that was just executed God scratched his head the Bible says this thing was organized watch this we have a government structure in Nigeria and in many parts of Africa and there are times where when the government wants to do certain things there is a group of Intel the DSS and the intelligence unit is that true by reason of their office no matter how private and personal what it is the president wants to do or what it is that the executive cabinet want to do by the reason of their office they have to be initiated into this nitty-gritty am I right on that this is government now if there is a traitor among them he can take advantage of that access of his office we have seen it happen across governments. Is that true? This is what I believe happened. That there has been a discussion. Let us make man, listen carefully. I do not believe 
let us make man was an idea that just came after he made the trees and the rest no no the bible is just telling you that there was in god's mind this idea it's not just that it was in in verse 26 that the idea just came no let us make man was the motivation behind the recreation of the earth again because the earth was recreated for the sake of man are, are we learning now so because of satan's office as the light bearer the cherub that covereth he's had access to some of these things and the bible says with that he began to nurse that idea in his heart you see the same attitude scattered all through scripture that a man's enemies will have to be members of his own household the one that was used to throw jesus down because you see you can study satan by the consistency of his patterns it was judas that gave jesus away because of jesus had moments when he would talk with them and tell them about establishing an earthly kingdom and about all of these things and it was on the strength of that information judas could liaise with other people to say do you know what let's kill this man he's going to overthrow you they believed he was talking about a physical government so when they finished their meeting judas was looking at a way of making money from it the same character of the antichrist don't forget the Bible says Satan entered Judas. If he entered G Judas, Judas will be a continuation of his original desire. The light bearer, having the idea that the plan of man, not necessarily redemption, the plan of man, now to be created in the image and the likeness of God, that gave him an opportunity and that idea because of access you see the reason why God judged him and you see the reason why Satan cannot be forgiven because of the kind of access that he had. He was, the, his very name, Lucifer, meant the light bearer. He was the custodian of the wisdom of God. Are we together? Watch this. The Holy Spirit can minister to me today by reason of my oneness with the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit can speak to me, look up please, and he can tell me that this man is going to be a billionaire next week. Now I have that information. What I do with that information is now up to me. I can use that information to manipulate this man now. Do we agree on that? Now my corruption, you see that, it will earn me a punishment because I have now betrayed the trust that he gave me. But I am now privy. Before it happens to this man, I can announce it and tell him, Sir, in two weeks, you are going to be a billionaire. And truly, it will happen like that because I have been granted access. Are you getting what I'm telling you now? Yes. Before it will happen in the earth, it happens in the heavens. Is that true? This is what convinces me that Lucifer had access to parts of the plan of God for man and when he found out that the image of God is going to be invested to another creature that is not him nor any being in heaven listen you need to know why Satan hates you I'm tracing a story for you the greatest desire of Satan did not come to him let me prove it to you again by prophetic adumbration look at Haman and Mordecai when the king said who shall we honor you see the same manifestation of the spirit of the antichrist because a man had access to the king he knew that the king wanted to lift somebody and he said to himself who else you see the parallel of this character across systems who else will the king honor and he gave a very elaborate strategy for honor and he said sorry you are not the one go and do the rest do it for ordinary Mordecai who is staying at the city gate and carry you are the one who will push the donkey and say bow the knee that was an insult to Mordecai and Mordecai went and reported to his wife and the wife said sorry who is this man you are trying to fight he said he's a Jew he said you are finished that means there is a covenant that has given this man an advantage are you learning scripture now yes 
everywhere you see the spirit of the antichrist there you see that there is always betrayal and you see that there is always treason Satan being the light bearer granted him access to certain secrets of the Lord. The Bible is very clear as to the fact that God can trust men with secrets. He can trust men with truths. Are you learning? Satan's arch enemy, listen carefully, is not God. God is his creator and even in his fallen state he will acknowledge God satan's arch enemy is man now let me wrap up as we pray what does satan really want what has been his drive for all these probably millions of years and he's not rested why does satan want your family listen carefully why does satan want your health why is he afflicting you with sickness? Why does Satan want to destroy the ministry, the man of God? Why is he destroying your business? It's an old story. And if you do not know what is Satan's motivation, you will be shadow boxing around issues, not knowing that the issues predate you.